Hey everyone, it's Brian. In this video, I'd like to help you solve this problem, which is an integral using trigonometric or trig substitution. Now, if you first look at this, you might be tempted to just do a regular u substitution and say, let u be one plus x squared. But let's think about that for a second. If you let u be one plus x squared, that means du would be two x dx. And we don't have a 2x left in the integrand to cancel out, so that's not going to cut it. And it doesn't look quite like any other uh, integration technique you've learned so far. And it, it doesn't look like any of those inverse trig integrals exactly, so we're sort of left with trig substitution. So what trig substitution are we going to do? Well. I want to substitute one plus x squared, that's for sure, but I have to do it in a very specific way. And the two trig identities that you're going to be using are sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, fundamental trig identity, and then one plus tan squared theta equals secant squared theta. Pretty much the same identity if you divide the first equation by, um, well, cosine squared. So my question to you is which one of these identities kind of looks like what's inside the square root? And to me, it sure looks like one plus x squared looks a lot more like one plus tangent squared theta. So I'm gonna be using this identity in this problem. So knowing what identity I'm going for is going to make my job a lot easier. So if I'm going to turn 1 plus x squared into 1 plus tangent squared theta, what kind of substitution am I going to have to do? Well, I'm going to have to do x equals to tan theta. It might be obvious, maybe it's not, it's okay. But you'll be able to see here in a second that when I let x be tan theta, under the square root is going to be 1 plus tangent squared theta, which is secant squared theta by that trig identity I just showed you. So whenever you're doing these substitutions with integrals, right, I need to change the variable. So in this case, I'm changing the variable to theta, which means I'm going to have to deal with this dx. I'm going to have to make sure I get a d theta in here. So by taking the derivative of both sides, the derivative of tangent is secant squared. I'll stick on that d theta. So I've got what x is supposed to be. I've got what dx is supposed to be. Let's make these substitutions. So I know that dx on top there is supposed to be secant squared theta d theta. I've got an x squared right here. Well, that'll be a tangent squared then, right? Because I let x be tangent. And then I've got the square root of 1 plus x squared well, I called x tangent again. Okay, I've made my trigonometric substitution. At this point, it's just simplification to get to a place where I can actually solve this integral using techniques I already know. So here, pretty much the point of doing this is to use that trig identity, one plus tangent squared. I'm just gonna go ahead and replace that with secant squared, because that's what we said the identity was at the beginning of the video. But this is really nice because I've got something squared, square rooted. Well, if I square a square root, that's just gonna undo itself. So this right here, the square root of secant squared is just secant theta. And now we can just do some simpli simplification, right? Secant squared over secant is just going to be a secant to the first up top. over tangent squared. And if I wrote this like sines and cosines, this would be one over cosine theta. And tangent squared, that's sine squared over cosine squared. And if I have dividing fractions, I can multiply by the reciprocal.
And it looks like now I can cancel one of these cosines. So I've got cosine theta d theta over sine squared theta. And if it's all right with you, I'm gonna erase some things. And so if you need to see any of that again, please rewind. But now, we've reduced our integral into something you could have solved with an integration technique you already know. How about a u substitution? What if I just let u equal to sine theta and make du cosine theta d theta, right? The derivative of sine is cosine. And because at this point you're pretty experienced, you can see that the cosine d theta is just going to become du and the sine squared theta will just become u squared. And this is now an easy integral to solve. So this is just really u to the minus second du. And if I integrate that, that'll just be u to the minus first divided by minus one plus c. Now we're not done. We started with x's. I wanna end with x's, right? I've got u's here. So I'm gonna to have to do some back substituting. So what's u? Well, u is sine theta, and I'll do two things at once. I'm just gonna write this like minus one over u plus c. Maybe I won't do it at once. So u is sine theta. So this is minus one over sine theta plus c. But I wanna know what is this in terms of x? Well, how can I figure that out? I know what x is, x is supposed to be tan theta, but I've got a sine theta. What we need to do is some basic trigonometry. We need to draw a triangle that describes this substitution here. My poor drawing of a triangle. So I know that x is tan theta, or it might help you to write it like x over one is tan theta, because tangent of an angle theta on a right triangle is just opposite over adjacent. And you can get the third side, whichever it may be, in this case it's the hypotenuse, by the Pythagorean theorem. One plus x squared. Hey, I've seen that before. That was in our original. That's no coincidence. So now I can tell you what sine is. And maybe to make my life a little bit easier, I'll just write, I'll write sine as one over cosecant. So this is actually minus cosecant, because that's one over sine. And cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. So in this triangle, hypotenuse is one plus x squared, opposite is x, so it looks like our answer should be minus square root of one plus x squared all over x. That's our opposite side, plus c. And hey, there you go. We've got our answer in terms of x. You could take the derivative of this thing. It would be kind of a pain, but you could see that we'd get our original integrand back. So this was kind of a lengthy video. Uh, you're free to rewind and watch it again. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts here. So this is a technique that you're going to want to practice a couple times. If you got something out of this video, I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.